All right, conditions of parallelograms, section 6.3. We're continuing on with parallelograms. Uh, who can tell me something they recall about parallelograms? Besides, they have four sides. We already know that. What's something you know about parallelograms, Martina? The, like, the sides are parallel. The opposite yeah, sides opposite are parallel. parallel. Nice job. What's else something we know? The opposite angles are congruent. Nice job. Um, those are two things we're going to continue to talk about today. Does anybody else have anything else? Nothing. Those are, those are two correct things. Um, here's some more information. Okay, besides the fact that opposite angles are parallel, um, this is one that Troy said right here. Opposite angles are congruent. Okay, here's another one. If one pair of opposite sides... Ooh, that's the wrong button. If one pair of opposite sides is parallel and congruent, then it is a parallelogram. So if opposite sides are parallel and congruent, then you get a parallelogram. Okay, if their opposite sides are parallel and congruent, you get a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then you get a parallelogram. What type of shape do you think of when you think of opposite sides congruent a lot of times? Not only a square, but a rectangle. A lot of times you think of a rectangle. Rectangles are parallelograms. Okay, so that's a kind of a true statement within that. Uh, if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. That's one that Troy said. Uh, another one. If the diagonals bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram. What's it mean to bisect, Jack? Cross at the which way? At the middle, so at the midpoint. So bisect basically means cut in half. So if the two diagonals cut each other in half, then it's a parallelogram. And then the very last thing, um, if the two consecutive angles are supplementary, what's it mean to be supplementary to each other? Supplementary means add up to? 180. 180. So if the two angles are supplementary to each other, then it's a parallelogram. Now think about that. What happens when you have two consecutive angles that are 180? What type of angles are those? Who remembers that from parallel lines? So for example here, let's erase this. Same side, yeah. Angles A and B would be same side interior angles. So you have two consecutive same side interior angles. That means they're both parallel to each other, which then means it's a parallelogram. That's why that works. Nice job. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram for the given values. Okay, so number one, it gives us x equals 9 and y equals 4. When it gives me those values, what do I want to do with those values, Ryan? Uh, you that I was doing this problem, sorry. Number one, it gives me x equals 9 and y equals 4. What do I want to do with those two values? Uh, plug them in. I plug them in. Anytime it asks me to show and it gives me some values, I always plug those values in. Which one do you want to start with plugging in, Bryce? Let's plug in x equals 9. Okay, so I would do 2 times 9 minus 6 gets me qr is what, Bryce? Yes, sir. And then I do 9 plus 3 gives me st is what, Johnny? 12. Those are congruent. Okay, then I plug in y equals 4. 4 times 4 gives me rs is what, Caitlin? 16, nice job. And then I go 4 plus 12 gives me QT is what, Hannah? Uh, 16. 16, nice job. So now I look, what theorem or what uh, condition of parallelograms do we have here? Is this a parallelogram, first of all? Yes, yes it's a parallelogram. Yes, it's a parallelogram. How do we know for sure it's a parallelogram, Max? Max, how do you, what condition says that this is a parallelogram? Yeah, what about the sides? Nice job. The opposite sides are congruent. That's all you have to do today. Okay, for the most part, we're just kind of showing that parallelogram or that it is a parallelogram based on certain conditions. So if the opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram because they are congruent. That's what we're showing. Uh, number two. Let's try number two. 
given W equals 3 and Z equals 31, which one do you want to plug in first? Payne, which one do you want to plug in first? W. Sorry? So I plug 3 in for W. 4W minus 2, or 4 times 3 minus 2 gives me what, Payne? 10. 10. And then I do W plus 7, 3 plus 7 gets me what, Jersey? 10. Awesome. So those are congruent. Great work. Now what do I have to plug in, Nick? What did you say? Z. Z. Nice job. Plug in Z equals 31. Uh, what do I get for angle? Let's do F first. I guess F is probably the easier one. What's angle F then, Nick? 62 degrees. What's angle E then, Nick? 118 degrees. Now, do those have to be congruent, Nick? No. What type of angles do those have to be? Supplementary. So we check. Is 118 plus 62 180? Yes. Yeah, that's 180. So what's that tell me about lines DE and lines CF? They are what? They are parallel. So is this a parallelogram? Yes, it is. Yes, this is a parallelogram. Because I have congruent, oh, I guess I should probably put the congruent symbol. I have congruent and parallel sides. Okay, that is a parallelogram because I congruent and parallel sides. So if you recall, these five conditions I'm looking to meet. I'm looking for it to try and meet one of these five conditions. If it doesn't, then it's not a parallelogram. If it does, it is a parallelogram. Try numbers three and four. Take a couple seconds to try these two. Let's go through number three. When you plug in nine and 11 for X and Y, what do you get for angle A, Camden? Nice job, A is 72. What do you get for angle B, Jessica? 108. What do you get for angle C, Frost? And what about angle D, Gabe? Is this a parallelogram, Tyler? Yes, it is. Why? Nice job. That's exactly what you have to do. It is a parallelogram because opposite angles are congruent. Nice job. Number four. Uh, what did you get for HI? Uh, Johnny, what did you get for HI? HI. Um, <laughs> Two times four point three. Eight point six. Okay. Um, what do you get for IG? What is IG going to be, Noah? Thirteen? Yep, it's thirteen. Uh, for which one? Oh, I was doing IF. Ah, that's okay. What do you get for IF then, Peyton? Peyton? Isn't IF seven point six? Yeah. And then what about EI? What is EI then, Jersey? EI is thirteen. Is this a parallelogram? Nope. nope. No, this is not a parallelogram. Okay, why is it not a parallelogram? I look right here. Okay, that is not a bisector. 8.6 is not 7.6. So that is not a parallelogram. That is why. Okay, so again, this is kind of a review of what we've been talking about, gentlemen. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. That's the definition. One pair of opposite sides is parallel and congruent, then it's a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, or angles are congruent, that's a parallelogram. If the diagonals bisect each other, it's a parallelogram. And if one angle is supplementary to both its consecutive angles, that is a parallelogram. 
And again, here's an example of what is a parallelogram. Here's an example of what is not a parallelogram. What else would you need to know on the second one there, on number two here? What else would you need to know? You would need to know the other angles to say for sure that's a parallelogram. Or maybe you need to know at least one angle type of thing, okay? Or they're supplementary or something. Um, and this is that supplementary angles again where the three, uh, it's the consecutive angles have to be supplementary. So let's look at number five here. Determine whether each quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. As I look at number five, does that have to be a parallelogram? And if so, why? So looking at those conditions that we just talked about, does that have to be a parallelogram? Yes or no? It does have to be a parallelogram. This is a parallelogram. Why? Because opposite sides are congruent and parallel, which means that is a parallelogram then. Okay, number five, yes, it is a parallelogram. What about number six, Anna? What do you think on number six? Does that have to be a parallelogram or not have to be? Yes, number six is a parallelogram. Why? Because the diagonals. Diagonals what? Bisect each other. Nice job. Number six is yes because the diagonals bisect each other. Good work. What about number seven? Does number seven have to be a parallelogram? Frost, I see you're shaking your head no. Why? I agree. Okay, and that does not necessarily mean they have to be. For example, a popular figure that has something that looks like this is something like this right here. What shape is that? Trapezoid. A trapezoid has opposite sides parallel and the opposite, the difference, or, and the different sides could be congruent. So that is not necessarily a parallelogram every time. Okay, good catch. And what about number eight? Is number eight going to be a parallelogram? What are you thinking here, Drew? Yes. Yes, it is. Why? Yeah, opposite angles are congruent, so that is a parallelogram. Good work, sir. All right, take a couple seconds to try these three. I'm going to tell you right now, 10 is a challenging one. It's a little bit tougher. You have to recall some information from Chapter 4 for number 10. Oh, chapter 4? Okay. Number 9, Johnny, what are you thinking? I'm thinking no, because you can't tell which side. Like, you don't know. Like, it's not each one. Good work, sir. Number 9 is no, it is not. Um, this does not necessarily mean bisect. Although these sides are congruent and these sides are congruent, that does not mean it's bisex. Good catch. I'm going to skip to number 11. Okay. What do you think about number 11, Ryan? Yes, because x would equal 90. Ooh, is that always going to be true, though? No. No. Number 11 is actually no. Okay. Because um, what happens if it's like 60? Then. Then you get 60 and 60, and these two angles are then 120, and it's not supplementary. Something to think about. What if X was moved to this angle? Then is it always a parallelogram? Yeah. Yes, because then it have consecutive angles. Okay. Now let's look at number 10. As Max said, you got 50-50 shot. Max, what was your 50-50 shot? Yeah. It is a parallelogram. <laughs> Does anybody know why for sure it is? Tina. Because the vertical angle is that right? Ah, here's something to look at. Okay, a couple things to look at. We all see that these sides are congruent, right? Yeah. Yep. Three and four, what type of angles are three and four? Vertical, Vertical angles are always congruent. What type of angles are one and two? Uh, Alternate interior. interior angles are congruent, right? Yep, do. do you see these two triangles that make? Uh, they're the same. They're the same. That's which then means my two sides are the same, and now the two or the figure is actually, in fact, a parallelogram. It is a kind of a tougher problem tying a bunch in. That's all right. All right, last thing we're going to do today was we're going to talk about parallelograms in the coordinate plane. Okay, so a quadrilateral, shh, a quadrilateral has vertices at 1, 1, 4, 5, uh, 6, 6, and 3, 2. Tell whether EFGH is a parallelogram. So I'm going to draw my lines in here. Now, a couple things to look at here. 
It says use the distance formula and find EF and HG. Do we know how to find the distance between two coordinates? Yep. Yes, I want you to do that. Okay, so find the distance from EF to GH. And then it says use the slope formula. Find the slope. Do you know how to find the slope of two coordinates? Yes, we do. So using what you know about distance and slope. Now, again, if you don't like the distance formula, what other formula could you use? The Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem. Nice job. Okay. So using that information, find the distance between EF and HG, J or HG, and then find the slope of EF and HG. Take up seconds to find both. Look at this now. What is the distance from E to F going to be? What's my distance, Trevor? The distance is 5. What's the distance from H to G, Trevor? That is 5 as well. What about the slope? What's the slope of E to F, Johnny? What's the slope for H to G, Johnny? Are those the same? Yes. So is this parallelogram? Yes, it's a parallelogram. They are the same. Okay, because of that condition, the same sides are congruent and parallel. They're the same. They're parallel. The counting method doesn't work. You have to use Pythagorean theorem and distance formula. Um, we're going to skip number 15. Let's go to number 16. Try quadrilateral NOAA. I'm going to plot the coordinates of this while you're still working. I'm going to plot the coordinates of this. I don't think I plotted it right. Shh. Why don't you make your graphs big enough that This one is big enough. This one's big enough. So there's my distances. I have N, O, A, and H. Using the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem, either way you choose it, I can do Pythagorean theorem doing a squared over b squared, or a squared plus b squared, again. Uh, what do you get for a distance of NO, Mr. Boger? No, the distance, so like the side. What? Austin? Distance is five. What about the distance for OA? What is the distance for OA, Johnny? No, I get the slope, so. Okay. So you find the slope here, right? Yeah. Do you make it right? See the triangle here? Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the distance up here? Oh, okay. I get What's the distance up? The OA is 2. The OA is 2. Yeah. Good job. But the other one, let's go back to the other one. Okay. Um, What's the distance up? 4. What's the distance across? 3. So I would do 4 squared plus 3 squared, and that gets me C squared. What's 4 squared? So 16 plus 9 is... 25, and then I take the square root of 25, and that's where I get 5. That's the Pythagorean theorem worth of that. Okay, so OA is 2. What's AH going to be, Tina? 5. And NH is what, Drew? 2. Are those congruent? Yes, they are. So is this parallelogram? Yes, it is. Here's your assignment.